Hi everyone. Uh, today we'll be looking at BERT, uh, pre-training of deep bidirectional transformers for language understanding. So um, BERT basically uses the um, the encoder part of the transformers, um, and the architecture of the encoder is described in detail. And attention is all you need. Paper. So BERT stands for bidirectional encoder representations from transformers. Um, so this illustrates the um, framework of using BERT, right? Uh, so BERT model basically represents a pre-trained model. Um, and uh, this model um, with its uh, pre-trained weights can be used with minimal number of uh, additional parameters for a wide variety of different downstream tasks, right? Um, and uh, you would ideally perform end-to-end -end fine tuning of both the pre-trained model as well as the additional weights. Um, catered to a particular downstream task, right? Um, so in terms of the pre-training, uh, they pre-train using the MLM objective as well as the next sentence prediction objective. So the MLM objective is a mass language modeling objective where um, certain words, uh, I believe 15% of um, the words or tokens um, in your input is masked. And the goal is to basically try and predict those uh, words. And uh, the next sentence prediction task basically involves uh, predicting if um, two sentences, sentence A and sentence B, are consecutive or not, right? Um, so in terms of the um, pre-training model, you have uh, two different sentences, uh, sentence A and B, uh, which are basically fed in, and they are called a sequence. And the sequence is prepended with the CLS token. And the two sentences are separated using the SCP token, right? And um, so now um, they are fed into the encoder, uh, the transformer encoder architecture. So now when you're basically generating embeddings, you also need to incorporate information, whether it's from sentence A or sentence B, right? And then you basically get contextualized uh, representations of each of these tokens, right? Um, the contextualized representation for the CLS token can be considered as an aggregate representation of the entire uh, sequence. And, um, and then you have each token has a representation which is generated. And um, the dimensions of this depend upon the hidden uh, vector size, right? Um, I believe it's either 768 or 1024, depending on whether you're using a uh, BERT small or large version. And um, so this is the pre-trained model. Now, on top of this, depending on the downstream task, you may need to add certain additional parameters, right? For classification, we basically use the um, hidden representation of the CLS token. And um, but but you may still need to add um, certain layers uh, to basically uh, convert this from the hidden dimension to the number of classes in your classification task. Or if you're using uh, question answering, right, where you feed the question a sentence A and you paragraph a sentence B, you may need to extract a span from paragraph, right, uh, to indicate the answer. So you may need to introduce additional vectors corresponding to the start and the end of the span. So uh, like this, depending on the particular downstream task, you may need to add certain additional parameters. But um, but what, what this paper basically says is you can use the same pre-trained model um, with a very minimal task-specific architecture, right? You don't have, need to have a different model for each kind of task and still get really good results. And um, fine-tuning this pre-trained model as well as the additional parameters end-to-end, -end, um, even in uh, scenarios where you have very little uh, training data in your downstream task, um, can can uh, result in good performance. Yeah, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, they use BERT base and BERT large. Um, the base model has 110 million parameters, and the large model has 340 million parameters. Um, so the input representation now, basically, if you recall from the um, attention is all you need paper, you had token embeddings to basically represent uh, each of the tokens. And you had position represent, uh, embeddings to represent the position of a token in the uh, input, right? So now you additionally need to have these um, segment embeddings to uh, represent whether it belongs to sentence A or sentence B, right? 
And then they basically uh, evaluate these uh, BERT models on uh, the base and the large model on uh, the GLUE benchmark. So the GLUE benchmark has a bunch of different tasks to evaluate language understanding. And um, they, they find that on all these varied kind of downstream tasks using the pre-trained model and very minimal additional parameters suitable to the downstream task, um, the BERT model sort of, uh, at least the BERT large model, uh, outperforms the uh, other, the state of the art, and also models which have uh, the left to right uh, representations, or uh, models which have a very shallow bidirectional uh, representation. And they also um, test their model on the squad and the swag data sets and they find that it performs better than the uh, prior state of the art. And then they perform um, certain um, ablation studies on um, uh, by basically skipping the next sentence prediction uh, as in if your objective just had the mass language modeling and uh, they, they see like a slight degradation in performance on some of the tasks at least, um, right? Uh, these, and um, indicating that the mass language modeling and the next sentence uh, prediction in conjunction basically performs well. Um, they also evaluate the left to right kind of representations where you basically in your input, um, if, if this is your input sentence, you're basically only looking at um, examples uh, looking at input up until a particular word uh, to generate a representation for that word right um, unlike uh, transform architectures where we have bi-directional representations right you basically look at the left to right as well as the right to left to get the um, contextualized representation for a particular word and then they also look at this uh, by LSTM and and then they find that uh, basically having both MLM as well as um, like sentence prediction uh, drives the performance up. And uh, they also find that the model size, um, um, larger models basically drive the performance up, um, even in scenarios where uh, you don't really have too much of training data on the downstream task, even then having a large model is considered to be better. Um, and then finally, uh, they also evaluate um, using BERT. So, so up until now we were using, uh, they, they demonstrated that you can use BERT in a pre-trained uh, plus like some additional layers and uh, train end to end on a downstream task kind of framework. Now they say that you can also use BERT to, um, you can have a feature based approach for BERT where you can extract uh, either the embeddings or the hidden activations and then use it on uh, use it for a classification task right um, even then you basically get a pretty good performance with such kind of um, feature based approach as well um, where you're just using the pre-trained model and you're using extracting uh, activations or embeddings from it compared to fine-tuning the model end-to-end Right. So in conclusion, they basically say that um, um, bidirectional, having such pre-trained models, uh, which are bidirectional in nature and also uh, deep, uh, help um, get uh, help um, tackling a large set of um, diverse uh, downstream and LP tasks. And uh, the framework also is pretty simple where you have a pre-trained model, you start off with your pre-trained weights and then you have certain additional uh, parameters um, geared towards uh, a specific downstream task and then you fine tune it. Uh, I believe they do it for like two to three epochs, not, not a, a large uh, number of epochs. So you fine tune it for very few epochs and then you, you get uh, good performance.